uh, October 14th, 6 p.m. Harbor Commission regular meeting. Uh, you want to do the roll call, Brian? Jake Phipps, Andy Craig, here. Matt Please, Ben Jones, here. Mike Babbitt, here. Okay, we have uh, approval of a special Whoop. agenda. Sorry, I screwed that one up. <laughs> and regular agenda. My bad. Okay, we'll have our regular agenda. Move to approve the agenda. Second. Agenda has been approved. Second. Uh, minutes from March 5th. Move to approve uh, March 5th uh, meeting minutes. Second. Okay, got the minutes. Approved and seconded. Uh, visitors, is there anybody online or on the phone? Hey, Andy, just so you know, when if someone does call, just when they are, you just want to let them know they got three or just point over. What do you want to do? Okay, when they come on, just let them know that they got three minutes and you're online now. Okay. So, so Harmony, is there anybody online? No? Everybody in the back? <laughs> you guys are good? Okay. Uh, Harbor Master's Report, page three. Covers a few months. Yeah, there's probably a lot of small things left out, but I think I got most of the important things on there. Um, let's see. So we didn't get to build a grant, which you know was pretty unlikely, or used to be the Tiger Grant. This year was the build grant. We didn't get that. We did get the state matching grant again this year. Whether there's actually going to be money in that account, kind of like last time, we don't know. So we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Um, let's see, what else? Was there anything that popped out that someone had a question about? Uh, as you can see, we did ship out oil, 5,300 gallons, which is not bad. I mean, it's expensive, but we are burning it. So if we only ship out 5,300, I think we didn't ship out anything last year. So this year we shipped out just over 5,000 gallons. Uh, let's see, school is getting back on board on burning some more. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, down a little bit in travel lift, of course, due to the season. Um, but that's because, uh, as most of you know, there wasn't a lot of money being made this year in fishing. Um, oh, and then uh, we did get the bid back from uh, Dave Romehilt on restrooms for the shipyard. So that's a that's a go. I'm gonna be doing putting uh, restrooms down the shipyard. So when it kind of falls into our CIP of shipyard improvements, so it's a small one, but it's something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, so, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, um, and that's gonna be on cares cares money. So awesome. yeah, and let's see. Are you going to give us an update on the tier one? I see you've been working with Sam. Yeah, we got that. That's the one on the state oh, matching that's, grant. Yep. That was the CARES. Okay. Yep. But no, it's the state matching grant is the, for the 5 million and 5 million match, okay. so, which would do G, H, and I and part of L. What kind of timing are we looking at? I mean, as in, we won't know until December if it's even in the governor's budget. It's in the hopper. Yeah, for 20, what they call 22. So. Yeah. Is, is there going to be anything <laughs> of G flowed by that time? Uh, if it stays in there and we get lucky, we can by next winter probably be doing the project. Not this winter, coming next winter. Because it still has to get into the summer before they actually approve the budget and all that. And then if it stays in there, by the time we do design and all that, which won't be that difficult because it is going to be a re direct replacement at that cost. Um, one other thing we're working on, I haven't got with Helen yet, but I sent her an email, and I don't remember the guy that sent me, talked to me on the phone, about doing um, a bid-build packet instead of a bid, or design-build packet instead of a design-bid-build, because you get about 30% more for your money if you do it that way. So, so we're working on seeing if that is something we can do within code without going out to a bunch of other bids and everything and get, you know, so we know how bids come in for the city and stuff like that. They usually come in really high. But if we can do a bid build packet and just go with somebody, one person. So, hmm. 
Yeah, and then um, we are working with uh, the cathodic protection system, which is the corrosion, anti-corrosion system on the ocean dock. Is well, it's ancient, and it's only working at about sixty-five to seventy percent its capacity of keeping everything from corroding all the pilings. So we have an inspection every other year, and I don't know if I put it in there, but I'm work. R and M Design Engineering is doing a bid packet for us, doing all the engineering work. We're paying them, and then go out to bid, and they'll be the engineer for the job because they're doing the packet. They can do all that. They've done it before for Homer and Seward and uh, Sitka. So, And we'd get rid of the system we have if it goes the way we want um, and go with just an anode system instead of all electronics. And down there, I don't know if you know, in this, the dry shack down there on the dock, the big on the ocean dock, is full of, or like rectifiers or whatever, filled with oil. And then electronic current goes out through the whole dock and everything. So... We just go with the anodes, they're about a 25, 30 year lifespan. So there's no inspection involved, and you just get it done and then replace anodes in 25 years. So, so like, <coughs> like zincs? Yeah, yeah. If we turn up the juice, can we make the ladders repair yeah. themselves? <laughs> yes. <Corrosion>. Yeah. <laughs> so, Did, were we still in the process of, uh, were we doing the uh, wood railings and stuff out there? On, on the ocean dock. We actually uh, got a bid from uh, Wilson's to because the concrete's been ripped out and everything, so they're going to replace the concrete. We have uh, Lumber Yard ordered us 10 bull rails. I think we'll do 10 this time, and then the next year we'll do another 10. On, but we Down there with uh, John Bannon looked at the worst ones to get rid of them where they mostly like, broke out on the concrete, and we'll replace those. So and The ladders, though, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's the next side step. We're trying to figure out a way to do them. I've talked to Petersons, and they said that they're going to get me a bid on ladders. I think the only way to do it is just to uh, cut out the old ones, fully cut them out, and then rebolt in new ones because you can't really fab them into the whole thing. Right. Since, right. Cause, yeah. 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 So without pulling the whole fender, which well, <laughs> would be big, big money. But so. Oh, good to hear. Uh, let's see. We did put two stops. Stops on. The hoist on the city dock and on the loading dock so they don't spin them all the way around and tangle the wire yeah i tangled the hoses up mm -hmm. now they just tangle the wire which they did this weekend <laughs> which was wrapped on itself six times but backwards <laughs> did uh, did they upgrade the motors for those we put new motors on um just one observation i had while i was down there using it was just like a I guess you know, like the up and down is not as big of a deal, but it seemed like it might be slightly more power than we would want, like for the back and forth. Like it was just kind of jerky, and I was just worried about long term damage. Was that the city dock or the? That was the one that Cam Two used. Oh, the loading dock. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I just thought maybe we could put a pressure relief valve. Yeah. In no, I agree. Turn that. Yeah. Slow it down. Yeah. Bit, okay. Slew gear down. A yeah. Bit. I hadn't heard that from anyone, but okay. Yeah. yeah. I, it just might help yeah. save some wear and tear long term. Yeah. And then uh, we are going to submit to uh, Copper River Marketing Association for a crane. So, don't know if that's going to go. We're going to submit it anyways. They wanted us to be able to put it so no one else can use it except for a single fisherman instead of like a true processor can't be using it. That we can't technically do, but you know, you can't just count somebody out. And, hmm. So, um, but we're going to submit it and see what happens. And see what they'll do. Uh, let me just take a note here. Okay. And uh, anything else? Was there anything that uh, stood out you needed a question on or an answer on? Um, I guess I have a question on the uh, oh, what Bannon did down at the Science Center and the mm -hmm. the loading dock. Yep. This is what it's called. How much did that end up costing when it was all said and done? It looked great. Yeah, we were about seventy-five thousand over what the estimate was, which was two hundred, right around two hundred. So, it was about so and we bought the lumber ourselves. So, in labor, it was like two seventy. Okay. So it was the lumber. How much was that? One hundred. Okay. It was. I mean, we ran into on the loading dock a lot of issues that we didn't. Well, we expected something. Um, <clears throat> The 12 by 12, uh, the pile caps that everything sits on, I think we found four that were bad. Of course, all the pilings, the bumper pilings and everything on the front, they weren't structural, but they held a, all the strain. We replaced five of them, I think. 
Um, yeah, and every single joist under there was bad. I mean, so, and we only planned on doing the drivable surface for the most part, but by the time we started pulling up boards and realized how bad they were, it was like, it, we don't want to pull up these deck planks later, another year from now, because, you know, and now you're ruining everything that you did to do such a good job, so. Yeah, so, yeah, there was a lot of money spent. Um, the only com two complaints I had about it was one is the ladder is in the wrong spot. So when you get over there and you can't get up the ladder from your bow picker and then can't run the hook right down, it's in the wrong spot, depending on which, I don't know. And then the other one was we can't tie up to it because the pilings are cistern together and they're too big around. I was going to mention that. I've had I told them people, get a boat. I tried to do it the other day and it was like... <laughs> It's it sucks. I just told him suck it up. But yeah. <laughs> it it would be nice if we figured something out. We it's a I talked to Tyler Dylan. Um, there was a talk of putting some kind of rail that you right. could tie up and down. Off. My only worry is that someone is going to tie around it and spring off it, and then they're going to pull that out of the bull rail, or they're going to pull it out of the piling. And I don't know. I just you know, we know how some people are. <laughs> I, you give I, them something to tie off to, they will tie off to it. One the way. <laughs> One thing that I was thinking when I was there, though, is, is that it is really hard to, you can't get, it's too tight of a space to get a rope between mm -hmm. the middle of them. Right. And it's just way too far to reach around it. And uh, I was worried that it's going to encourage people to just tie off onto the ladder mm -hmm. pull on them yep. and cause damage to them. Yep. Is why I, the, yep. why I was even thought it was worth it. Well, Tyler was saying something about just running a rope from maybe one piling to the other. And then you just tie off to another piece of, a piece of rope that's between well, them. The hard thing about it is, is though, you know, it would, You'd almost have to have several of them. No, no, I agree. Yeah. I agree. That would be the issue is that you wouldn't, one wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. So one thing I've seen at other harbors, mm -hmm. I don't know if it would even work down there because I haven't looked at it lately. Yeah. But some piers have tie off like floats that they're hoops with bumpers on them that float up and down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I've like actually seen them. I didn't, I forgot about that. Like a, so you're not really fun. Or camels, weren't we kind of there? I don't know. They actually, gave them down on the piling and you right. tie off to them instead of tying off to the piling. So if they gave, gave one of those away at one of the cargo conferences that someone designed it. Go up and down. It could almost even be just a rope that goes around both pilings with corks on it or something. So you yeah. So you're not you're not pulling on the. I mean, you're pulling the pile, but you're pulling the whole thing instead of just one little bolt that's holding it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's unlikely that you're gonna as big of a boat could fit in there would right. be safe to tie yeah. off to it. Yeah. Yeah. The ones I've seen are like they're big, sturdy mm -hmm. aluminum or whatever. Yeah. They've got flotation yeah. and. You know, you could even make them where they stand up above the yeah. surface of the water and have like a cleat on them or mm -hmm. whatever, you know. Yeah, the one I saw was actual cable, but in case with floats on it or something. Yeah. Uh, how, but yeah, I know what you're saying. It's not a bad idea. Yep. So So is that something we want to task everyone with going down and well, it's something eyeballing I can... and coming up with ideas for next meeting? Sure. It would seem like a good idea. I know I fiddled around down there for quite a bit of time the other day trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> Just get a ladder out of it. <laughs> Just use yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't yeah. used it. So I'm, yeah, I'll go. Yeah, take a look at it. Uh, any other things? Was it good? Not unless you got any questions. Good, good recap of that, Ken. Yeah, well, you know, it was still in progress during our last meeting, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to see how it turned out. It looks good. Mm -hmm. it does. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on to new business. Uh, we have the 2016 Pink Salmon Disaster Relief Fund discussion. So we have pages four and five here, our letter. And um, looks like there's some money available. So the money has to go as best you can to directly accommodate the pink salmon fishery, of course, because of what it is. Uh, the discussion with Public Works and myself was that, well, without water, we don't process pink salmon, and that's our largest processing part of it. So if we can do some kind of upgrade to water system and some to the harbor, we'd split the cost 50-50, whether they put in another pipe or they put in another pump or somehow to get more water or continue um was it two years ago they put in a siphon up at yeah crater lake because we were running low on water 
but it's a temporary fix. It was like a six inch UHMW pipe that they ran in, but it has to be removed every year and it's not protected by the winter or ice or anything, which was able to get us enough water when we get low that it wasn't such a big deal. So the thought is to put in a permanent siphon with a valve that we can turn off and on that's actually buried in that drainage creek. So the ice and they can be left year round and they just go up and open it or remotely open it one or the other. But so, you know, so, you know, 330, around 330,000 would go to them and 330,000 to the harbor. Um, my thought was the amount of hoist and the age of our hoist would be really nice to replace our hoist. They get used by absolutely everyone, of course, um, whether it's a saner or, or a gill netter. Um, I think it benefits the community as a whole the most. That's my opinion. Um, and it's what we can do with that kind of money. I mean, there's enough there to replace two hoists and possibly refurbish another one. And my thought would be that we would replace for sure <coughs> the loading dock one, put a new one there, and put a new one out on the city dock. Right, did I say that right? Loading dock to the city dock, new one on the loading dock. And then you'd have two out on the total, two on the, the city dock. And then you'd move camp two and 60 would be out there. And I would open up the one on the loading dock for just everyone else. And you'd still have, if possible, we could replace this one over here or, you know, if the market association came, association came through, then, you know, it wouldn't be as much. But, you know, when we replaced the motors, we replaced the one on the loading dock, the motor twice now. When the first time we did it, they sent us a motor that we thought was the right one, direct replacement. But it wasn't, so we had to buy another one. Um, those motors were discontinued that are on these cranes back in the 80s when this side of the harbor was built. So, you know, those cranes are way outdated, of course. Um, if we could get something that's got all the safety features on it, um, a heating system to heat the oil so we're not freezing up in the winter, it'd be a lot nicer maintenance-wise and for, of course, all the users. I mean, there's plenty of times in the middle of winter we get calls, hey, it's not moving, it's frozen. Go down there and let it run for an hour, let it thaw itself out, take the heat gun over there. You know, so wintertime, summertime, whatever, it's just a better use for it, in my opinion, that kind of money. But. And, and he thought about getting a, a higher capacity crane, one of them a little bit larger for? We did consider that, and Jake did a, got a quote on that. The only issue is the amount of work you're going to have to do the dock to handle that. We don't have a spot. Yeah, we don't have a spot that would be even, he, Jake had his engineer go over and look at like the city dock. And he said that structurally it was not handled like say a 2,500 pound crane, you know, to lift that kind of weight. And if we know everyone pushes the 1,500 pounds as it is. So I'd hate to see one just get tore out of a dock and they're not mounted into concrete. They're just, it's on wood, you know, so. You know, on the loading dock, which I didn't realize that they're, they're big 14 by 14s that are underneath the two of them under that crane that are hooked into the rest of the dock and then bolted down to that. So luckily those were in good shape, but yeah. So that's my thoughts on it. I just thought all the way around it makes sense that way, but. Yeah, um, Mr. Chair, I guess uh, my comments on it would be that um, I think we definitely need to pursue replacing the cranes i just don't know if that i mean while saners might use cranes mm -hmm. uh, i don't feel like the it's proportionately like a pink salmon project that i mean 90 percent of the crane use is going to be used by gill nutters and and we've got a lot of processors that don't even buy pink salmon they mm -hmm. use them and so i would like to see us find a project that benefits the sane fleet kind of more directly um those are the you know, they catch 95% of the pinks in Prince mm -hmm. William Sound. Um, a larger crane could do that. I know in Valdez, a lot of people use their big crane to, mm -hmm. to put their skiffs in the water and stuff and move seines around. And I mean, you can even, you can palletize a seine on your deck and lift the whole seine off, put it on a trailer at once. It's kind of cool over there. But um, I was curious, I know I'm talked to you in, or I emailed you in May, I think, or late April when I found out this was coming. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure if you did any digging on redoing the three stage like what you did on the loading dock, where you just kind of fix it up a little bit mm -hmm. and you know replace the decking and maybe some new pilings out front and the bull rails mm -hmm. and uh, 
we did look into that a little bit um, with P and D. Um, to do three stage, you'd have to redo the bulkhead to do it the right way, um, which means you you're either going to sheet pile or you're going to drive a bunch of pile wood pile down in the front of it because it's, it's not just is it by the bulkhead you mean like where the that's whole hand is held yeah it's all because it, yeah because it's, it's a wall there oh. so there's a wall of pilings down below that hold all that dirt back because it's not maybe the lowest stage doesn't have so much but there's still a little bit of a bulkhead down there that's underwater as you can see the piles stick up when it's real low so to do it the way it should be done you're going to be in a pretty high price once you start. I think once you start getting into it, kind of like we did with the loading dock, you're going to get part way into it, and now you're going to have you know double the money into it by the time you're done. So, I mean, did, yeah, did, I think it needs some lo 10 to 11 care, but I think there's not nearly enough money there to come close to fixing that the way it should be done if you're going to do it. Yeah. But yeah, I guess I didn't realize the city was looking at using part of this as for a water project. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually a little disappointed to hear that. Did you have any same specific so the, projects that you were? Uh, yeah, the three stage is, you know, as a saner, I use that more than any other harbor piece of infrastructure besides my stall, I guess. Um, you know, if you're going to load your, load your sane, you're going to pull over there, and we have them pull over there to load our mass amounts of groceries. And, you know, it seems like I've got two or three pickup trucks full of, purse lines and plungers and trailers and you know everything else that comes along with saning um coming off the boat every fall and onto the boat every spring so i'd say the three stages probably the most utilized by the same fleet maybe the grid <laughs> um i don't see it airplane I, flow is i see yeah a lot of people, people use in their gear it's yeah but i mean that's a Part of another project, not mm -hmm. really. Yeah, and I mean, I think it, project. Yeah. I, I think it's a pretty big project if you really get into it too. Yeah, but yeah, I, I agree with Ken. I think that the three stage is probably the most critical infrastructure for the Seine fleet in the harbor, and if uh, if nothing else, maybe you know, even uh, I know, like on I forget which one it is, but on the back of it, the you know thing that kind of stops you from going off the edge and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's maybe even just doing doing a few little board replacements and stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, we, help uh, yeah spruce it up a little. Oh, bit. I agree. I, I definitely think it needs some some care. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think, in my opinion, I don't. If we sink three hundred thousand into it, we're going to have to sink another three hundred or more into it, which means we're drawing out of our account more and more every time. Which I mean yeah. is good if we got a bunch of money in there, but if we need it. To do our tier grant. I guess I was yeah. thinking of it. I was looking at that number, mm -hmm. thinking we were going to get the whole thing. And, and I, I agree. Like, hey, I think that's the perfect amount to redo the three stage. I, I mean, I think we could come close grand. to doing it for that somewhere in that area, yeah. even with issues. But yeah, for half that, we're going to half another out of our account of, you know, and, you know, that cathodic protection system is not going to be. Yeah. And we, and, and well, we can't deal without the ocean dock either, even though, like, not saners or gill netters use it, but. The fuel dock is connected to it and uses it. you know yeah fuel comes in there and groceries come in there and samson and all that so mm -hmm. that's pretty important Low infrastructure all the way around so for everyone so, so basically like with the bulkhead issue down there we i mean it sounds like you'd have to remove that dock address the bulkhead issue and build a completely mm -hmm. new structure yeah. there for the most part yeah so it, it's, it's yeah i mean talking to product. like pnd they you could end up into it pretty deep mm -hmm. You know, because they think the only way to do it the right way. It could be a million dollar project. Yeah, I mean, it could be five, <laughs> but Is, I don't think so. So I guess another question when we're on the three-stage dock mm -hmm. idea, and it's unrelated to the pink salmon disaster relief, but that qualifies for a tier grant, and we could do a tier two in the future on yes. that. Uh, um, because it was a state dock, that's the old ferry dock where they used to bring a, in the chill cat. I'd have to double check. I don't think it falls into piers. Oh, I'd have to double check on that. Okay, because I just thought it was yes. a state infrastructure that was turned over right. to the city. Oh. But they, they're, yeah, there's some. I'd have to double check, and I can't say for sure. But I thought uplands and piers were not part. But I can double check on that because I, I don't remember. I know uplands were not, and there were some other things in there. I just know that was the old ferry dock. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. No, I got you. I, at some point, that was state law. State. Yeah. Owned. Yeah. So if what you're saying is that if possible, if it falls into that category, we could because that's two up on five hundred thousand dollar, and mm -hmm. it's. Right for the tier two, or there's one that you can do up to a million or something. I can't. Yeah, it's in the millions, if not the whole five. I think. Oh, really? So you only can take you only can take one tier one, 
mm -hmm. as many as you want. But usually, yeah, usually your tier twos are anywhere from, I think, no less than fifty or 75000 all the way into the million somewhere. And I know you're right about the Uplands thing. I just thought. Right. And I, that's I, I why. I'm not sure about peers. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. That'd be awesome. I just know that's. Besides G Float, that's probably the worst part of the harbor right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, G Float's a little bad. Yeah, G Float and then the three <laughs> stage. Those are the two. Yeah. Oh, and then the old grid. Yeah. But. Yeah, okay. So I guess my question is the consensus that with the money that we have, is the crane the route we want to pursue right now? Is it? Is there any changing the mind of, the, of City Hall on giving us more of this for direct fleet I, Yeah, I don't know. Um, that is, council wanted to, to weigh in. Um, they seem to like the idea on the water and that, but they definitely wanted... Uh, Harbor Commission's thought on at least the cranes. So, I mean, if you, you know. one one thing that better, more cranes, better access to the other cranes mm -hmm. in the harbor would take a little bit of the use off from the three stage dock, which could be helpful for people that are using mm -hmm. it for other than just the crane. You know, because it's so handy at the be able to get move things quickly. Um, yeah, it's too bad we can't. I, I also uh, worry that the three stage. It's, it's like, man, there's got to be something we can do to help <laughs> Even if patch it up a little bit. I mean, yeah, it seems like a lot there, yeah. but that I whole so. row of yeah, that whole I agree. Row of guard pilings is all busted. Mm -hmm. There's we do have a new ladder for it. So we did buy a new ladder for it. Um, it's sitting on top of our contract. Even if training. we could just do new guard pilings, yeah, and bull rails or and something, and yeah. stuff, that would be a, yeah. it would be a big help. I yeah. Think. yeah, that's yeah. the main yeah. problem is the bull rails are getting ripped off. I can't even tie my boat up there because the pilings are gone and the bull rails got yeah. ripped off because the pilings broke. So people started tying off to the bull rails. They just ripped them right yeah. out. When yeah. the pilings are broke off so far down as the tides fall on the corner mm -hmm. of the boat, wants to get yeah, on the no, top it's a bad deal. Stuff, so. Get your chainsaw and jump out at low tide. <laughs> Some one of the guys up there. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, I can understand the thinking, but, you know, with the water project, but. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it does summer, become an issue sometimes. Um, it's, yeah, it's a problem sometimes versus the three stage is going to be a problem all the time yeah. moving forward and a liability. Mm -hmm. It just seems like it's a really good fit with the money being for the pink salmon disaster relief that it would, you know, it just it seems like it's just such an important piece of infrastructure for the same fleet. Yeah, and I mean, I guess I'm not, I would like to have all the money myself too. Yeah. Um, but as also talking with public works on the, the side of it, if that one time we run out of water and we got to cut somebody off, do we cut the canneries off? Do we cut public off? Or do we tell them to take their salmon somewhere else? And then that's a loss of money to us. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, you know, I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow, of course. I mean, the sky's not falling. But if it does happen and we can't get that extra water, then what do we do? We tell them to ship them somewhere else and then we don't get that raw fish tax or anything else. So, yeah. No, I can see the thing besides the water, you know, with the water project. Yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I understand the argument on it. I, yes. When, the, when I saw it, I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it all. But, you know. <laughs> Because yes, you could do quite a big project, like saying on on the three stage, if you could do that with all that money, and then just maybe have a little leftover if you got lucky, you know, and put it into a cr one crane or something. But yeah, but yeah, rebuild the three stage, capable of handling a big crane, mm -hmm. not too big, because then we got to get everyone certified, and you have to have a card, and you have to, you know, because <laughs> like in Homer, they're five ton, and Sewer just I think got a five ton. I think that's five ton is what they have in value. And they have to all get certified and go through OSHA. Every user has a card. It's at least, I think it's 15,000 pounds. Yeah. No. Seven ton? Seven. Yeah. No. It's a big crane. And yeah. It looks like yeah. a skookum is freaking. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. Uh, kind of like when you look at Seward's travel of compared to ours. <laughs> like, this thing's huge. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, another idea that I had that would benefit the Saint Fleet. Um, instead of doing three cranes, maybe we just replace the crane on the three stage and then refurbish that one and move it out. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then if we had some leftover money, I figure a crane's a hundred grand, right? So at least, but by the time you run city, the city dock, you couldn't run power to the crane that's another crane out there. Okay. So you'd have to run. I mean, you'd have to run power out. So it's going to be another twenty, thirty grand at least. Yeah, to have someone wire in the the infrastructure to run it because it, now when you turn turn on that crane out there, the lights shut off and they warm back up. How, you know? <laughs> how much would uh, electrical pedestals, another row of electrical pedestals, where uh, the tarp? building was that's what we're looking at and actually doing on our own as on, our, on our okay yeah that's my other idea that benefits yeah. the main fleet directly was mm -hmm. the bathrooms and then the mm -hmm. electrical but it sounds like we're already doing the bathrooms yeah so then i was wondering yeah. i'm waiting on, a, on i talked to paul cloyd about that because when they do the bathrooms they're going to have to trench in uh power over to there mm -hmm. if they could run at least another thing of conduit in there to pull power over for and then we can do a couple pedestals every year or something because i mean we might as well use that property Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we might not need it this year, but right. There's been years we have. Yeah, there's been yeah. years I've had to wait a couple mm -hmm. of weeks for oh, yeah. hot so that I could have power. Yeah. It was like, oh, we can pull you out and put you where there's no power. Right. If you want power, you got to wait. Yeah. So, yeah. That, that's one thing that I could see benefiting the Saners mm -hmm. having more power. And then, yeah. Other than that, replacing the harbor. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, having slips that won't blow away would be nice. But it didn't blow away. Thing. It was hooked on to the bull it was. pile hoop. It, there was. <laughs> and then come alongs and rope. And right. Reds. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, the copper star, not the copper star, the polar star guy was down there. He called us right away. So. Yeah, like the whole pool family. Yeah. Yeah. Out down there, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, do you need us to vote on something? On no, just a consensus of, you know, I mean, if, you know, with so, that amount so, of half of that money, you agree on that, unless you could get yeah. all of it. Or is our consensus that we kind of like the idea of doing what we can with the cranes, as well as making some improvements mm -hmm. to the three-stage dock? Yeah, but, I mean, if it's adding bull rail and doing some decking and stuff, which is not a super... Yeah, I mean, a huge one, but yeah. Yeah. If we drop one of the brand things. new cranes, you know, if we just do one crane and a refurbishment, maybe that frees up a hundred grand that we could put into some piles and some bull rails or something. Mm -hmm. You know, that would get us kind of both. And then we can go to the uh, marketing association, ask for another hundred grand for another crane, and then we can get all of it done. You know? Yeah. I so definitely feel like we should leverage as much as we can to the marketing association because mm -hmm. the gill nutters are definitely going to get the most benefit out of cranes mm -hmm. and i do feel like you know we just replaced that loading dock i would really like to see cam 2 get moved out of the harbor basin because they just the sheer volume that she's doing now it's like as a harbor user we don't even get to use that crane anymore in the season puts all the pressure on the three stage so as a mm -hmm. saner i go over there i have to wait for like nine gill nutters to get out of my way and so it would be nice more cranes would benefit but it, it's a lot of wear and tear on the facilities and stuff having the forklifts out yeah there and big trucks and uh well we're just going to pass it to the city dock <laughs> but i agree i agree it would be nice to get both of the small processes outside and where everyone can use all the cranes with inside and granted i mean they may use it once in a great while but you know, I mean, you can't put the bulk it, of the use, right? Keep the bulk on. of the use out, so it's freed up for everyone else. I mean, we're not going to sit down there twenty four seven and monitor, but their assigned place will be on that the city dock. And granted, if we have a breakdown that we can't fix right away, then yeah. we have to move them in. But yeah, if we can free that up, it would be nice. I agree. Yeah, and I would like to see the new crane go where the f most majority of the fleet use is, which is on the three stage, if that's possible. If we're going to pick a spot to put mm -hmm. a brand new crane, I say it should benefit the fishermen, yeah. not the processor. So, so going off of what you're saying is one crane, refurbish the other crane, and then facelift on the three-stage. Yeah. A facelift on the three-stage and then... We'll yeah, like, I mean, it's bull rail. And, and, and then put a brand new crane on the three-stage. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that part. That's what, you know, I guess it really to decide the exacts of it, we'd want to know... You know approximately what we'd have to put into the three stage and see yeah i mean it's like how, how much do you want to do you know <laughs> like i mean just to put new pilings along the front of it and then yeah. do the railings or something like that yeah i mean the and pilings the are a minimum of 50 dollars a foot um depending on where you get them from and then yeah so i mean yeah you need 40 foot minimum 40 foot pilings mm -hmm. so 
guard plans, can we use HDP? HDP. That plastic heavy duty. Plastic. No, no, I know what it is. Uh, you mean like a an actual piling made out of that? Yeah. Oh, I don't. Uh, or guard piling? I just. I don't know. Film with cement. I don't know if you have to film with. Yeah, cement. I have no idea. I, don't, I know which target. I just don't know. I don't know if I've ever seen that. I've seen other things encased in it. You know, as a as like a, a fender or some, or, you know, on there. down the yeah. shipyard, we got some around the. Oh, I just we were pulling. You know, we mm -hmm. pulled a bunch out from Trident. And we pull them out from other things. Okay, okay. yeah, I, know, like it's something we can look into. They don't rot. Dirty. You're not using them <laughs> yeah. as structural. as structural. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know see them being a little. You know. Anyways, um, <laughs> they're hollow, but if mm -hmm. just a guard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they're pretty easy to. I guess. Fasten to and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they're. Re, you know, a lot of repurposed. I mean, a fifty bucks a foot. Look, it's expensive. It's yeah, I don't know what new. it is. Uh, HDP, you know, pipe that thick cost, but yeah. Oh yeah, I was thinking of used one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it is yeah. probably more expensive. Yeah, I, but I mean, new. we just have to see. I mean, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing bull rails and some decking on it and try to get the front face of it fixed. I just wonder how. I mean, how old is that dock? When was it put in? Is sixties? I mean, is it sixty years old now? Or? It's got to be. I, yeah, or before that, I got here. 50s. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's it I mean, seemed old when I was a kid. It was old when yeah, I was a it kid. It was. <laughs> I mean, G floats 40 when, plus. Well, I mean, they build it for the chill cat because yeah. the chill cat's not that old. It's not the chill cat. It was the one before. It was. It was an old landing craft. I can't remember what it was called. I thought it was the chill cat, but it was the one before the Bartlett. Well, the chill cut was before the Bartlett. Okay, and, so and then, it had a door. I don't know that it was yeah. true landing craft, but it had. I thought yeah. the chill cat definitely docked there. I think yeah. the previous ferry before the chill cat did also. Okay, yeah, I thought the first ferry that we had was like a landing craft with a cabin, and then they and then they had the yeah chill the cat. very first ferry, but I don't know if it. I just watched the channel on it. Yeah, TV show on it. So I could ask my, you know, I'm I could ask sure. my dad. I maybe. almost think it went in before it was even like really a harbor. There was just a float over, kind of, you know, in the other corner. There was a there was a breakwater that ran, yeah. kind of like diagonal there for a while. Yeah. I think that's when they put yeah, it. Yeah, and G float was but part of the original. All floats were in and stuff. Though. Yeah, there used to be one that went out this way. It was before they moved the breakwater. That yep. thing was installed. Right. Yeah. Because G float was part of that. They moved over, and that's forty plus years old. Yeah. You know. Minimum. I mean, I don't know exactly, but I know it was the the oldest dock on this side. Mm. It's all wood. It was never replaced when they did the concrete. Well, I mean, they put the the new ferry dock. They've already replaced the new ferry dock since that was you know, decommissioned, <laughs> and then they put in the what is right. what is the the ocean dock? That was the new ferry dock that they put in what seventy eight, mm -hmm. and then then, they have then the in Lego structure. Yeah, then the two thousand and four or whatever they put in the new one off the side of the new one so right with all the flexible floats Ugh. i mean it's gotta be so so wood pilings if they last another 60 years they're only 50 bucks a foot or whatever i mean i think we paid i think we paid about 40 from shoestead but they've been laying around his yard too, yeah so. the rest of the dock's not going to last that long right. so yeah. i wouldn't want to see us spend a bunch of money on mm -hmm. on you know if, if the plastic's 70 dollars a foot or something you know yeah, I mean, if we were going to quadruple our money, uh, the spending just for plastic, then it probably wouldn't be worth it. But yeah, are they just they're just front face to have people bang against yeah. up and down, right? Yeah, yeah. The the issue with them being long is that for them to grab a hold of them with the pile driver, they um, even over there because those are just fender piles over there. They want to drive them. I think, uh, yeah, John Bannon was saying they drive them fifteen to twenty feet. I mean five to ten feet down but they got to have about five feet up top to grab a hold of them really well pry it into place yeah and in just a pound and hold them so that 40 for 45 foot range is good so I see yeah you know you end up cutting a little bit in the end when you're done with it but so mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay yeah well there there you go we got some consensus there so yeah we got a so one crane one flight. furbished and then facelift three stage I think that's, yeah, does that sound like about 300 grand to you? <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> yeah. Do we have the money to cover a small overrun? We can build it into our next year's budget or yeah. something? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that segues us nice into the 2021 Harbor <laughs> Budget Review, page six and through eight. So you guys will be happy to hear this. 
we're not raising rates this year. It would be a tough year for people. <laughs> I brought that to the manager. And, uh, thought, well, it's probably a bad year for one or two people to, <laughs> yeah, to raise rates. Um, someone did mention, maybe we could drop it a little bit. And I said, well, then we're going to have to make that up in another year. So, and it hurts that much more and people are going to complain no matter what. I mean, you know, I get it. So the thought was, don't raise rates this year. See where we go next year. Um, and just do our standard. If we do it again next year, we won't double it. Just go up. If we're going to do 5%, we're going to do 5%. We had a step. You know. Yeah. Incremental step. Yeah. We're going to not, we're going to skip one of those steps this year because it, it's a bad year. I mean, granted, the harbor did well. The budget looks looks good. I mean, people still paid, but a lot of people did cancel. Um, a lot of people, of course, are going to wait for some CARES money, and hopefully they get their stall rent paid that way. So, but, so that's that was the plan, and uh, the city manager agreed with me that it's probably not a good year for it. So. Nice. All right. So, so we got in there. A couple prior years, uh, what we adopted is, was for this year, and then the the other years. So um, some numbers have been moved a little bit, um, a little more aligned. Uh, like you can see with the revenues, we budgeted only fifty two thousand dollars for warfage. That didn't include our fuel warfage fee that we put in there. So I just bumped it to a hundred. It's, this will be our second real year of kind of figuring it out. And I mean, that, that is going to fluctuate no matter what. It may go up really high or may go down, but it probably will never go down really big. So I guess one comment I would have on that would be, I would really like to see that fuel warfage included in our budget. To see what exactly what it is? Yeah. Just, so, we, just so we know how much we're saving towards this harbor project right. that we're planning. Yeah. We figured it out, but we weren't at the end of the year. I can't remember what it was. We were above what we expected to bring in. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. Because once we once we do take out the bond, mm -hmm. I thought the whole plan was that we're going to have a new line item on here that says bond payment for three hundred and sixty three thousand dollars. Yeah. So, I mean, there there should be one on there. Yeah. Right. We're not doing it yet, but I understand no. what you're saying. Yeah. So if yeah. we had it, and then we just you know we'd have another line item on here where it's mm -hmm. transfers to reserve, and it would raise the transfer to reserve from one hundred fifty to. You know, maybe three fifty or whatever. I don't know what the actual number would be, but we should be putting about three fifty a year in because that's what our bond payment's going to be here in a few years. Yeah, so, we, we we're going to be putting more than that. I can tell you that. Yeah, it's more than the four somethings. Oh, good. Um, so what you're saying, you'd like to see a, a revenue of uh, fuel warfage broke out in in a line item? Yeah, that'd yeah. be that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, I think the public would be interested in seeing mm -hmm. that. Okay. Um, I guess yeah. Go ahead. another idea that I would, it's not really, I guess it's kind of related to the budget. I, and in your report, I saw that we're down, what, almost 50% on our travel lift use. Has there been any thought about maybe offering a, you know, short-term discount to try to get, you know, that, try to get some more people to haul out and get our numbers back up? Because we need 115 a year to make our payment, right? Or 75. 75, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we're well within the set. We're, what did I say? So we made our something? payment. Um, the year's not over yet. Granted, we, we know we're not going to get to 140. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was figured of 75 round trip haul outs. So uh, 75 one way is what the paperwork shows that we'd be able to make our payment. Our payment's 18 grand a year. Yeah. Um, That's not bad. Yeah. We did, I think I had 90 in there, was what it was, somewhere around 90. Um, there's a couple more that we know they're going to come out, but yeah, we'll, we'll probably break a hundred, but yeah, if we give, I don't know, I was just thinking, you know, if you give 20% or 30% mm -hmm. off, if you haul out by Christmas and that gets, you know, maybe that gets 10 or 15 boats off of our float mm -hmm. structure, you know, so it's a little less wear and tear mm -hmm. for the winter or something, but help some people out that need to do their maintenance on a bad year and gets our numbers mm -hmm. a little better. So in the future, when we maybe upgrade that we can prove that we've had over a hundred lifts every year mm -hmm. but just an idea i don't mm -hmm. know if there's any merit to it you could give black friday sale or something <laughs> give away know. the hannah cove to the i tried that guy andy <laughs> won't take it <laughs> andy won't do a coffee shop out of it so <laughs> um, 
I guess that was one thing on my report. We did have the Wanderer up for sale. Any interest? Interest, no bids. Not any real interest, but yeah, no yeah. bids. Hmm. Yeah, so. Um, uh, one thing I did talk to uh, the finance director about, well, two things actually. One is, I don't know if we'll ever get anywhere on it, is our administrative fee of taking out something if it's not exactly Brandy's pay, or at least a percentage, a couple percent here and there, because as we know, City Hall doesn't do our billing. Brandy does all the billing. Exactly. So, yeah. yes, I understand that we pay for other things. We also envelopes and paper and stuff like that. But, you know, we pay an admin fee already to the person that works for us. So, I mean. Yeah. Um, In the it, past, I've had a big gripe about that. Oh, I know. Yeah. Um, you know, last year and this year, I have a little bit of a less of a gripe about it because I know how much work Sam's doing on these grants mm -hmm. for us. Oh, yeah. That was always kind of my, my gripe before is they hadn't, they hadn't even applied for a grant yet, right. and we were still paying that high amount. Mm -hmm. Now we're at least getting the applications in, and we've been selected. We haven't got the money yet, but right. hey, at least yeah. we're doing work. And, you know, Sam worked on this whole bid for the, the bathroom, too. Yeah. I mean, I've been working on the drawings with her and stuff, but, I mean, she's done a lot of work on it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we're definitely getting our money's worth on that side of it. Yeah, the last Someone's two helping years, us. we definitely have. Yeah. So. But on a regular basis, you know, and the other one was that... The fuel warfage in the raw fish, I think Brandy mentioned this, um, somehow get that taken out of our revenue as not to be charged that admin fee because it, it goes off the total amount of our oh. revenue. It's 11% of our total revenue. So we might get just say $400,000, but technically it's coming, it has to somewhere show that it's a revenue. Is it 11 now? It was 12 when I was on campus. Yeah, it's 11. They, okay, they dropped it. Yeah. Cool. But, it's 11 for everybody. Yeah. So it's kind of not 100%. Yep. So. Um, yeah, I guess the other thing I kind of noticed in here is a $30,000 increase in water, sewer, and refuse. Um, I keep hoping that somebody in the city will come to their senses and realize it's not just harbor users that use those dumpsters and mm -hmm. the break on some of them but yep there's something to be done there is that what they keep charging us more and more because there's more and more people from around town filling up our harbor dumps well i mean the cost is because it's being used by everybody um if when their rates go up ours go up but yeah i mean you know we five six seven dumpsters during the summer you know six three on each side and then one in the shipyard um, yeah, they get used by everyone. Um, we make a, touch, a couple dollars on it if we catch them, because we do charge. If we know they don't have a slip in the harbor, we do. It's ten dollars for three bags. It's not much, but uh, but yeah, so we know we don't catch them in the middle of the night. So you know, but I mean, it's been brought up a lot. I mean, I know even I know you've brought it up. I know other council members that aren't even fishermen that have brought it up. Um, some kind of flat rate and. There's no, there's been no budge on it. No. Well, even or, if they, or could they could have give us a free dumpster, one free yeah. dumpster or something, mm -hmm. two free dumpsters. I don't know. I mean, I, I understand that they're an enterprise fund and they got to make money too to support their system. I just wish there was a way. I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. I mean, yeah. you put signs up, you send people a bill, they end up paying it sooner or later, and then it just continues to happen. I mean, I didn't. I should have put it in my report, but I did the council's quarterly report of all the trash around one of the dumpsters. It was just a disaster, and it's like there's still snow on the ground, so we know it wasn't like all the fishermen that did it. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, I agree. The fishermen make a mess of it too. Not all of them, but some of them do. Yeah. But also our community members do. Oh yeah, we had a, two brush piles over at the north uh, last week, week before, because. Of they couldn't get to the burn pile, was closed and they just so they stacked it around the dumpster over there. there. You know, so that's, you know, an hour of me paying somebody to, or two, by the time they pick it up and take it, wait in line, because it's closed, to take it down there and then bring it back, you know, it's... Uh, that... That was you? Bring, no, that brings me to my <laughs> question that I forgot earlier, but what's our status of our cameras over there? They're up. Not operational, though. Not yet. Um, Arctic IT was supposed to, well, they're here right now. Um, they're supposed to get that loaded on the computer, the system, mm -hmm. so then we can have power hooked up to these. The one down here at the end of the breakwater, 
that one is operational and recording. So the so. way that I understand where we have that camera over by the dumpsters, like at the old harbor, mm -hmm. like at nighttime, aren't those direct? We can point those cameras? No. So we, we, have, we cannot view the dumpsters. Oh, we can. We can just set it. It's got three cameras. Each one has three cameras. Oh, on. okay. So you can, so you can set, set out different ways. So that one is pointed, the best of my knowledge, without seeing it on a computer, is pointing down at the down at the dumpster and then also towards the restroom and and outward you can still see the harbor but also so the parking area the ramps on the harbor if people are yeah there's two there. over there right one down by ocean beauty and one by cordova outboard or the restrooms there so the plan is to have one at the ramp here mm -hmm. over on like harville's corner over there and then the one down at the end is operational right now just so, so, so unfortunately yeah, when sorry. they're fully operational that if a couple tickets get written just be you know mm -hmm. nighttime oh yeah start realizing yeah like, oh this and that may help that because be. they'll start realizing they can't get away with it at, in the middle of the night because they are really good cameras except they're not exactly what i was thinking we explained when we got them that they were pan tilt zoom so you could do all that remotely but or Man. set them on a pan every two minutes or every 30 seconds and they don't do that so we will once we get them up on our operational look at buying a couple of pan tilt zoom ones that do it on their own you can program which would be nice to you know like homer's got that and it's i've been over there and watched them and it's yeah just keeps going back and forth and it's pretty quick and the quality is still really good so would, would, would that help alleviate any of the dock walks that uh, the staff has to do and stuff like that you're that's still you're never going to be able to go you know you're not going to read every one of those boats and then see where they're all tucked in or checking lines or making sure no one's sinking so yeah you're not going to alleviate that unless you got a drone so we're not going to do that which would still be tricky with the lines <laughs> oh yeah it, it's hard to it's hard to replace yeah. somebody walking and then, along going this doesn't yeah. look good and some gill will throw a piece of net up there or something you know <laughs> we'll have a net gun so or a shotgun yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so but hopefully, you know, if we can get those up and running, it will help on that, but also maybe help on people stealing stuff. So, right. Mm -hmm. That's you know. what I'm hoping. Yeah. If we could catch a few with the camera, it would be really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's our budget review. Anybody else want to, anything else to add on that before we move on? Let's see. We did have uh, capital items. Um, the new finance director we wanted to do it a little bit different where we kind of broke them out um, separately. I have no idea on the cathodic protection system. I just put 100 plus. It's probably going to be, well, 100 plus. Um, the ocean dock bull rail replacement and then um, shipyard fill. We're going to bring in, I don't know how many loads. We won't do it in the one year. I mean, you'd need hundreds of truckloads to really bring that back to where it probably should be. We're going to bring in 20, 30 loads every year of D1 gravel and kind of get the back up to, you know, over time it's sunk down with the travel lift and snow plowing and all that. And then um, same with behind the shipyard, that's a lake back there when it rains or a lot of boats washing back there, get that up. And then of course, uh, Ken, the finance director asked me to just throw in the crane thing, but I can actually, I'll change that to uh, one new, one refurbished. And then, uh, and then the, Three stage dock refurbish or facelift, whatever we want to call it. Something to get through the next 10 years. At least. I got like 11 years left, so it's got to at least make it that long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, uh, let's see. I guess one thing um, I noticed on this draft mm -hmm. budget is is missing some numbers here towards the end of the budget, you know, as far as like what the total expected. Right. You mean like, um, like the total expected expenditures and then the total transfer to reserve and the, you know, total depreciation, just like that last little. Most, section. most of them should still say this, stay the same with the exception of like you're talking that, um, like how much do all those numbers add up to, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it should be in that 1.5 area for expenditures. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot has changed in there, but like you're talking with the fuel warfage and that stuff for the bond payment, we either got to throw, well, that's in expenditures, never mind, in reserve. I mean, in uh, mm -hmm. revenue, I'm thinking. But 
Yeah, well, it says. You but know, the transfer to reserve should include our other money from fuel warfare and raw fish tax. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm kind of curious how much we're saving mm -hmm. per year so I can yeah. keep a mental math of how much we've got in the mm -hmm. account. It would be nice to see how much we've got in the account maybe in January or something a year end. Yep. I know Ken said he's going to get that for, uh, we've heard that in the last manager too, but was that that we were going to get a report on everyone's, all the enterprise funds accounts yeah. of what is actually in there and what we're putting in there every year. Yeah. You know, because we know that we have to take some out. Like when we did the loading dock, we ended up taking money out of our account yeah. to finish that job. So. Yeah. But. Yeah, we just be good to have, you know, Keep an accounting of it. Okay. I don't know if it has to be post uh, audit or what, but yeah, it'd be yeah. good to. I think they're still waiting on the audit, so we'll. That's that's why I'm, I don't know. Still, yeah, we should be able to know. It shouldn't be that difficult to find that out. Okay. Yeah. All right. The budget review wrap up. Uh, old business none. Miscellaneous business. There's none on here. Is there anything that anybody wants to bring up under miscellaneous business that we didn't talk about? Um, I guess on the you mentioned that, that we we were we got the tier one mm -hmm. again. You know whether or not we get the money. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but we were selected. Um, I guess one thing that is I guess important to me, um, and I. Just want to reiterate, I know I've talked on it in the past when we had our joint meeting with city council in March or whenever it was, early April, is, uh, you know, we, we drew up those really awesome plans, alternative 4B, mm -hmm. um, with the drive down float and everything. And I really like that plan and stand by that plan and mm -hmm. think that's the direction the city should move, even if we can't do the whole thing at once. Um, you know, that was based on a lot of discussion here and, um, based on some previous discussions from like 2013, what the community wanted. And um, so if we did get the, the money and we're able to start the project, I would like to see us, I don't know if it's too late now um, that the grant has already been submitted and approved, but I'd like to see us come up with a, maybe a step-by-step -step on how to get to that alternative mm -hmm. four. And so step one's this tier mm -hmm. one grant, maybe instead of doing as many finger floats, we would do that first approach, G float, and the drive down dock, and maybe H float. Maybe don't do I. You know, I'm I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. You know, if there was a way to do those three floats and the drive down dock, get that section done first, and then start focusing on doing the other three sections because we had six finger or six yeah yeah floats in that yeah drawing. the plan was not to do not with the tier one at least is yeah uh j and k would stay the way and only half of l float would get done yeah and yeah. so if it kind of almost seems natural except for the drive down dock portion mm -hmm. which that was you know we wouldn't be able to do the sheet piling and all that yeah. stuff either but um you know it kind of seems natural because the plan and alternative four was to split l float mm -hmm. anyway right and yeah. so if we could build it in a way that works towards that mm -hmm. overarching plan, I, right. that would be ideal. I so think. You don't have to remove anything, too. So yeah. It's already set up to. Yeah. So like on like, L-Float, if you did that, you'd have a stopping point where you could right. leave an opening later on. It wouldn't be redoing the whole plan over again. Yeah. You wouldn't have to rip L-Float out and redo it or redo wiring. You'd have a stop and bring it down somewhere else. Or Yep. Yeah. Um, I can tell you that um, talking to city manager and sam and i we've had discussions that the build grant we just don't think it's the right i mean not, not that it's not worth doing it mm -hmm. but the chances are pretty unlikely this year um cold storage and anchorage got it yeah um so i mean you know it's a big anchorage port of course is huge to us everyone um is definitely working with a lot of other people in trying to find a better grant you know Kristen carpenter is now here she's the director of um Prince William Sound Economic Development, working with her and a few other people and trying to get more grants out. So, you know, one thing, one of my, I had a buddy come up from Maine this year and there's, I don't know if it's still a thing, but he was telling me how, um, you know, over there, their waterfront's a lot different than mm -hmm. how it is here. It's 
a lot of privately owned waterfront infrastructure. And so his, I guess his family owns the dock. He's like multi-generational fisherman, mm -hmm. lob lobsterman. His grandpa did it, his dad did it, and they own their own dock. And then they deliver, you know, into that dock and other fishermen bring it to their dock. Mm -hmm. the dock is kind of like a cannery. Right. So they take a cut. And anyways, it's, they said they, that he applied or he didn't, but his grandparents did. Um, they got a working waterfront grant five or six years ago and uh, were able to completely rebuild their whole dock mm. and get a float and a travel lift and a bunch of other stuff. And so I don't know if that was a state of Maine thing or if mm. that was a federal thing, but mm -hmm. I don't know if there's still working waterfront grants around. It might be mm. something to look at. I yeah. Googled it a little bit and I okay. pulled up the Maine stuff, but I didn't see anything federally. Right. It might just be, that might just be the Maine version of like what we're going for. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I can, yeah. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so that would be one thing okay. if, if there is some sort of a program for right. working waterfront. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think if we can just, we can kind of find the better avenue than the build grant. I mean, not to the saying it's not worth at least trying because mm -hmm. you're not going to win if you don't try. But um, the more our harbor is more economic than anything else, not so much as tra true transportation everywhere, but as economic for, well, the whole state really. Mm -hmm. So. So if we can look at something like that, maybe whatever. But we're going to definitely look at a lot more options, and if we can put a lot more grants out there, you never know. Yeah. More tickets you buy, the better chance. So. Yeah. I just really hope we can at least work towards that plan, mm -hmm. build grant plan, even if we can't do it all at once. Mm -hmm. You know, all at once is thirty million, but if we could do yeah, and you know, million of it the first time, and then sit around and keep applying, and yeah, maybe you know, maybe we do that if we get the tier one money. We pulled, put in the build grant, and we put in just for J and K and whatever that other one was, you know, yeah, or something. Maybe, maybe if or we go a little smaller it. in money request, mm -hmm. we get it for economic development or whatever. But yeah, yeah, I do think a really big, important piece of that whole plan was the drive down mm -hmm. float. I, oh, think I think it's something that yeah. the community needs. Yeah, take a lot of heat off the three stage. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, that brings us to audience participation. Harmony, anything? Nobody no. online? Not a surprise. All right, commission comments uh, and next meeting agenda items. Some of them came out in our discussion here. We're gonna look at, we're all gonna be, we're tasked with going down and come up with ideas to help the loading dock. Mm -hmm. uh, tie up situation. Um, what other um, what, agenda items, I guess? One thing that I had been talking with a few people around was uh, maybe possibly looking into like a slightly different way to do uh, electrical rates down at the haul out there. You know, it's kind of a just a standardized daily rate. Uh, you want it raised? It, it, it seems like it's more set up for somebody that's running a welder down there all the time yeah. and stuff. And there's lots of people that just want to have some light or stuff like that. There, a lot of people are just using the 110 side of the plug-in, so they're not really even capable of using huge amounts of electricity. But yet they're still getting charged at the same rate. I've just heard a lot of complaints about mm -hmm. how astronomically expensive it is to run a light. Yeah, you could just weld all day long right next mm -hmm. door for the same exact price. Mm -hmm. well, I agree. And I know it's a complicated thing because uh, no, we've actually to put meters, you got to have somebody go read the meters and stuff. But mm -hmm. I, I was thinking that maybe it possibly as simple as just separating it out into 220 volt versus 110 volt and have a higher rate, you know, for the 220 that's probably going to be used for the... Uh, you know, stuff that uses a lot more power and yeah, maybe the, pro a slight the problem with the honor system. Not everyone's on not, that. No, it wouldn't be the honor system. It would be like you could even you choose one hundred and ten or two hundred and twenty. Yeah, well, but your pedestal has receptacles a different color, it, so. and um. when they go by and read, you know, like okay, this guy's plugged in. Well, he's plugged into a red. This guy's plugged into the blue one. You're plugged into the red. That's the twenty five dollars a day. You're plugged into blue. That's ten or fifteen dollars a day or something. Is what what. I had proposed to me, I guess, by someone in town. What we propose is putting meters in, which I, be I believe we actually have the meters. That would be the best. Oh, you got the meters. I believe we ordered them. Um, a little loud. Um, Paul's got to, you just got to get Paul to put them in. 
Nice. So basically, at that point, you just you get your boat hauled out, then you re the, read the meter, come down, reset yeah. the meter. The thought was that we would read the meter. We'd have to figure out if we, the big one would be nice is to be able to buy power in bulk from CEC and get it at a cheaper rate, charge a little bit more. You can't go above what the regular rate is, but just a little bit more. If we can get it at a good rate, you make a little bit to pay for the maintenance and the outlets and breakers and all that. Um, and then you just read the meter off, you know. If you used a welder all day, well, yours may be a hundred dollars today. Mm -hmm. No, that's all. That's you know, I mean, because if you're running a welder all day, you're probably making out pretty good for twenty five dollars a day. Oh, yeah. If you're really using yeah. a welder all day, yeah, no, you're being subsidized by all the other guys right. that are just using their lights yeah. and stuff. And then you would just give them a, their lock; they'd lock it down. They let their buddy plug into it. That's not my problem. Yeah, you know, you know, something. They, they bring their own lock. Then it's not our responsibility to collect locks back or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You lock yours up. You're using power. You're using power. Nice. So, so that is that's what we because we had talked. I mean, I've heard heard that from a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of the guys, and I agree. Twenty five dollars when I forgot to unplug that cord because I forgot to unplug it out of my pilot house and left it, even though I wasn't using it. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to climb up and look. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to check to make sure you don't have it plugged into a freezer. Or you're just charging a Dewalt battery, or you know. So yeah, I agree. I mean, and. You know, I, I, yeah, I mean, even if, we, you know, we throw a service charge in there, you know, something just to, even if we just charge at the flat rate that the electric company charges us and we throw just, you know, we're providing the equipment to get that power there, just like they do in the harbor. They charge a monthly rate or any, even your house or yeah, anything else. 15 bucks a month just mm -hmm. for the, the line connect fee. Right. So something, that's just something we got to work out, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is the plan. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say we probably want a, a monthly fee mm -hmm. or whatever or and then plus usage, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to do right. metered. Yeah. And that's yeah. totally fair for everybody. Mm -hmm. You yep. pay for what you use. Yep. Yep. Any other agenda items? Uh, just, you know, an update on how the bathrooms and stuff are coming. I'd love to hear that at the next meeting. Oh, you mean the down yeah. there? Okay. Yeah. I and, thought you meant uh, the down ones here. I'm like, fine. No, the, the new one. You said <laughs> so you're working awesome. on that. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, <laughs> where did we ever get with uh, doing a centrifuge building warehouse that's not going to ever happen never got any quotes that were oh, no. on the ballpark right? oh no they weren't even close to the ballpark no. i mean you know we we priced out some buildings just in general and um yeah i think the lowest bid we had was a little over eight hundred thousand dollars um and, and you know when we designed it we designed it bare bones it was a building with a mezzanine in it lights we had lights and we had 110 electricity in it we had a panel, but we didn't have anything wired in for anything big, and we would do the rest later. Once we get the building, then we would work on everything else. And we had a $1.3 million bid, and we had an 800 plus, so. And the building size is 40 by 40, 60? 40 by 60. That's what I thought, okay. Truly one story would have a mezzanine to put supplies up top, but it wouldn't be like two full stories, and you know, it would have two, two garage doors in it and two man doors in it, I think five windows it was like three windows on one side and two on the other it was basically like my shop yeah and it didn't have heat in nothing it was just a bare bones stubbed in stuff but no slab it was slab with stubbed in you know for a restroom shower and stuff like that but you know yep yeah it was just like it's just not and you know much as i'd still like to have it because if nothing else, it'd be nice to put equipment and stuff in and get it out of the weather and everything, and to have a place to actually do real work. Um, you could even pull a dock in there if you had to, and you know, work in there. You know, especially the shorter ones and stuff so that you could get in and out. Um, but we seem to really have the city shop and the school on board with this oil burning. They seem to be doing a pretty darn good job. Um, Josh, I think his name is at the school. He's worked really hard to get that system up and going. So come winter, I know we'll be delivering a lot of oil and city shop change their filters out to the right ones and they're doing better. Of course, we're doing better on separating it too. As much as the antifreeze thing was a pain that we got stockpiled thousands of gallons of it, is that not having it in it, in the mixed in with the oil helps. Helps. Um, pulling more off the top, doing a better job of that instead of, you know, once stuff settles out. So, and then I've been told the refuse department is gonna get their oil burner up and running. So they probably won't burn a ton, but if they can burn a thousand, two thousand gallons a year, would be really nice. So, you know, like I said, last year we didn't ship out any oil, which is probably the first time in like 
Right. Well, since Ocean Beauty stopped burning it, that we haven't had to ship it out. You know, I mean, so. Yep. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Uh, commission comments. Yeah, I just want to, um, I guess, recognize all the hard work that the Harbor Department did this year with all the COVID stuff. You know, putting all those sinks in and following mandates and you know it was a little bit of a weird year <laughs> it's a majorly weird year just a little and since our uh last meeting yeah yeah since our last meeting i mean we didn't meet for months because of this and so mm -hmm. i'm excited to be in a position where we can meet again um hope we can continue meeting on a regular basis and uh just want to thank everybody at the harbor department for their hard work this summer and uh yeah hopefully our dock will stay together until we can get it replaced shh, shh. It's not talking about <laughs> Mike, you got any um, further comments? Yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, it was a pretty rough summer and uh, glad that uh, Harbor Department made it through uh, without any major issues. And uh, I guess I'm excited about uh, getting the three-stage dock fixed up a little bit there and uh, getting a new crane there. That'll be awesome. And uh, I think it's a really good use of that money. So that's all I have. Yeah, some good improvements in the works, and yeah, good to have a meeting. I know how. Yeah. All right, that's all I got. Thanks, you guys. Motion. Yeah. Move, Move to adjourn. Second. Third. Second. All righty. Thank you. Thank you, Harmon.